and let me begin by dispelling a myth. I do want to be liked. We brought two seemingly different groups of people into our studio to see if they could unite in a one-of-a-kind dance challenge. Prom I promise I do, I want to be liked. There are a lot of people who believe that I could not care less if people like me. I was very turned off by it, but I wanted to use the wisdom of God to my approach, so I prayed about it. The Holy Spirit said, I want you to stand up and be strong. I would prefer that people like me. Please run and tell your friends that I actually do care. First of all, uh, because I'm not a sociopath. <laughs> Amen. Secondly, because I am a native Los Angelino. And, 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 and if, if Los Angeles pounds anything into us, it is that we, we, we want to be liked. So why don't we just pair up? I'm not into I'm, touching, I'm, okay? I'm, I'm not into okay. put that out front. Touching. I'm no touching, no touching. No touching, I won't Bill's touch you. Me. I was paired up with Isaac. He was like, no touching. I was like, oh, this is gonna be fun. We desperately want to be liked. Now, the reason that people think I don't care whether or not people like me is because I have a tendency to say things that on occasion, <laughs> you don't even know what I'm gonna say yet. <laughs> On, on occasion, could, could be controversial to some people, to most people. <laughs> but it's not because I don't care if I'm liked. I do care. Ooh, who is this? Cool, oh, I'm yes. sorry, I'm sorry, I can't do this. I can't do it. I'm oh. sorry, I'm sorry. I'm a man of God, I can't do this. Oh, no. Yeah, I love those people, I pray for them. I would never do anything to hurt them or condemn them. But men are not supposed to dress like women. I'm not gonna go along, go along with that. It's time to stand up and be a man of God. But in all seriousness, as Christians, if we are not careful, we can fall into the trap of shaving off the edges of the truth so that we can be liked. People out of the religion, like I'm a man of God thing. I'm from the South and I grew up with, you know, homophobia, racism, like all that, you know, being non-binary, trans, black, all that. No one was being inappropriate towards him. So for him to act like that, it's kind of like, you're old, but you need to grow up. As Christians, it's not our goal to offend or anger people with the message we proclaim. The issue is that it's the gospel message itself that is offensive to sinners and rebels of God who love their sin and hate the idea of submission to a sovereign moral authority. In our natural state, apart from God's grace, we are utterly depraved and self-centered. Alrighty, so here is the headline that I saw. My boyfriend's cancer battle was ruining my mental health, so I left him, and now I'm running a marathon in his honor. Oh, I'm so sorry that was inconvenient timing for you. I'm so sorry that was inconvenient for your mental health. Although we all certainly have a natural desire for other people to like us, the reason why we as Christians often say things that result in people not liking us is because we care even more about them knowing and being transformed by the truth that God has revealed in his word. Amen. I mean, we, we want them to like us, but even more than that, we want them to like God. Listen, man. I know your father is a Christian. Okay. Are you a Christian? Am I a Christian? Okay. See, that's a very, you know, great question, you know what I'm saying? But let me ask you this, okay? No, 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 no. Answer the question first. It's okay. a great question. Because a Christian is someone that's repentant of their sins. Why you always That doesn't support sexual immorality. That's not walking for fame, but living for Jesus. Someone who's denied themselves, pick up their cross daily and follow me. I'm not against you trying to make money okay, or right, making right, good right, music. Okay. But if you're a Christian, you need to repent of your sins. Otherwise, just like any person here, not just you, you hey, need, okay, you'll find uh, yourself in hell. All right, okay, hold on. So are you a Christian? Hey, let me talk! All right. Are you a Christian? Okay, first of all, I came here to see Ronaldo. I'm in Manchester right now. You're asking me questions about God, okay? You know, I love God, you know, but... Just, just if you're I, but, hey, just no, if you're hey, hey, hey. I want to know. Hey, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Let me tell you this. Stop talking to me, sir. Have a nice day. Many non-Christians believe that Christians should just keep their beliefs to themselves and to not bring their beliefs into the public square. 
You have every right in the world, all those women who identify with your religion have every right in the world to not get an abortion, to not take birth control. But they do not have the right to dictate my life and what I decide to do with my body. I don't care about your religion. I'm so tired of having nonstop conversations about what the Bible says. You live your life in the way that you interpret the Bible. Again, I don't care, but you don't get to take the Bible and tell me, well, the Bible says this in this chapter and this verse, I don't care. I don't care, I don't believe in it. The problem with many Christian leaders and pastors is that they accept what people like Anna Kasparian are saying and they choose not to say anything that offends people like Kasparian, thinking that they are being more loving and winsome than Christians who do say things that offend the elites in the culture. And if we're not careful, we will do things that we believe can achieve that on God's behalf. Well, you know, I think I have an important voice, but I'm very, I think I've been good. I think part of my, if you want to call it success, is I've stayed in my lane, and my lane is lifting people's spirits and their, their issues. Trust me, I've talked to enough LGBT, they are not all the same. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Anyone any, and all Christians No, no. Uh, but how, how do we, first of all, has your thinking evolved on this? It, E evolved and evolving, mm -hmm. evolved and evolving. And because pastors like Joel Osteen and T.D. Jakes desperately want to be accepted by the culture, they think that being accepted by celebrities within the culture is a sign of success. But, but sometimes we divide, not necessarily over who we like, but over who we think makes the world like us. This is why we just get so out of sorts if we find out that some famous actor or musician or athlete is a Christian. Have you heard that so-and-so is a believer? Today we are so honored to have a world changer, a history maker. <laughs> One of the great voices of our generation, Ms. Oprah Winfrey is right here on the front row with us. Hey, Oprah. Hi Lakewood community, I'm Mariah Carey, and I'm so glad I could join you this Easter. We find ourselves in a unique time in history where we can't celebrate together in person, and I'm grateful that so many of us are staying home and staying safe. Wow, it's amazing, it's as though we think that the people who don't like God will find out that whatever famous actor or athlete or musician is a Christian, and we will come to them and we will say, really, you like that, you like how you did that? You like how she did that? Christian. And they'll say, wait a minute. I take back every negative thing I've ever said about Jesus because no, it doesn't work that way. Again, it would be great if we as Christians could be liked by the culture. We would love for the culture to accept and approve of the biblical truths we proclaim. You see, the point is not that we don't want to be liked. However, the problem is simply that as Christians who represent the name of Jesus Christ, we are unable to compromise concerning the saving gospel of Jesus Christ. And this gospel contains truths about sin and salvation that inevitably stand in opposition to the sin that the world and the culture cherishes. The point is that as followers of Christ, there is something that we value more. There is something that we desire more. Not to the extent that we become sociopaths, but to the extent that we are willing to endure the displeasure and disappointment of men because of that something that is more important. That something that is more significant, that something that is more weighty for us. And that something is the wisdom of our foolish God. Well, that's what you said. You think we should kill rapists. I believe that rapists who go so far as to abuse a woman deserve capital punishment, yes. We should protect innocent life, but the rapist is not innocent. 
Yes. You believe we should kill the children. We believe the rapist should oh, be killed. I believe you you believe in the death penalty for the baby. We believe in it for the rapist, yes. I believe, um, and I, I stand very proud on that. Going under the medical procedure of terminating- Murdering a child. Videos, whatever, is much different than killing you're using a, a lot of person. you're using a lot of euphemisms so when you said fetus that's a latin word it means baby and when you said abortion it's a euphemism for the unjustified taking of human life you so you can you can speak with as much clarity as you different. want but you're arguing that the products of rape should be executed we're arguing that it's up to the mother because at that point for the next nine months the mother's going to be carrying the child going to be carrying she's carrying a what, carrying a what? The child. The child. Okay. That's what I think she said carrying the child, didn't she? She did. Many non-Christians hate Christianity because they hate the concept of hell and believe it is ridiculously unfair. Here's Ricky Gervais mocking God's justice against sin. Straight to the annihilation of the entire human race because a fatty yellow trousers pick someone's nose. Our answer as Christians to this kind of opposition and mockery should not be to avoid talking about hell and God's justice altogether, as many popular Christian pastors do. Do you feel like you're cheating people by not telling them about the hell part? The no, repentance part? No, I really don't because it's a different approach. You know, it's not hellfire and brimstone. Rather, our answer should be to proclaim unashamedly the truth about human depravity and the righteousness of God's justice. For those of you who are thinking it, let me go ahead and expose the elephant in the room. It's not fair. It's not fair. The Bible doesn't claim that it is fair. Fair would be that all of us die and go to hell. Amen? That would be fair. So no, it's not fair that God saves people at all. That's not fairness, that's mercy. Amen? Trust me, you don't want God to deal with you on the basis of what's fair. If God deals with you on the basis of what's fair, there are things you thought, said, and did on yesterday for which you should have been put to death in your sleep last night. It's not fair that you stole that last breath from God. I would say you borrowed it, but you're never gonna give it back. <laughs> so no, it's not fair. But this is not about fairness. The reality is that all of us deserve hell for our rebellion against God and his commands. And we as Christians should accept that many non-Christians will hate us for proclaiming this offensive message. At the same time, we continue to call people to repentance and faith, knowing that Jesus Christ has the power to transform haters of God into beloved children of God who joyfully submit to his rule and authority. Propitiation means that he satisfies the righteous wrath of God. Only Christ. Nothing you can do. Only Christ. At the cross, he satisfies the righteous wrath of God. Thank you so much for watching. If you like these videos and wanna help support this channel, the best way to do it is to just watch these videos until the end and click the subscribe button. Thank you so much for your support and encouragement.